We gotta talk about iPads. Folks, it's not looking good. The iPad is in a really weak spot right now. It has been stagnant for about three years and hasn't really been updated in any meaningful way since the 2018 iPad Pro. That's five years since the last big thing to happen to the iPad and it's starting to show. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. I held a community post two hours ago as of the time that I'm filming this video, which category of Apple product do you think is the weakest right now in 2023? And 50% of the responses said the iPad. That is absolutely staggering and it's bad news for the iPad, which I think is a really interesting category and something that has a ton of potential. But honestly, the last couple of years, Apple has just been ignoring it and it does make you wonder, is the iPad dying? So today, let's dive into the problems with the iPad as it is now, how we got to this position, and what Apple might be able to do to rescue it. But first, a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Pulseway, the ultimate IT tool to keep your entire deployment network under control from anywhere in the world. They're the leading IT tool with easy management for repetitive IT tasks, system management and automation setup, and even device rollout and troubleshooting. Pulseway makes all this easy and simple. You can use it anywhere with a Wi-Fi connection. Pulseway is easy and powerful no matter what scale your IT deployment may be. So get started today by heading over to the link in the description below to transform your IT tasks now. And now let's get back to the video. The iPad was the last major product category to be introduced under the leadership of Steve Jobs, coming out just a year and a half before he passed away in October of 2011. And on stage at the iPad's introductory keynote, Steve Jobs laid out the vision for the iPad as a product segment. It was sort of a hybrid device between the iPhone and the MacBook. All of us use laptops and smartphones now. And the question has arisen, lately. Is there room for a third category of device in the middle? If there's going to be a third category of device, it's going to have to be better at these kinds of tasks than a laptop or a smartphone. Otherwise, it has no reason for being. But we think we've got something that is. And we'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. I mean, when you put it like that, it sounds like the perfect device. I remember how excited I was when the iPad came out because my dad pre-ordered one and on launch day, we were waiting by the door looking for the UPS truck. He even sent me out on my bike and I was going around looking for UPS trucks to see which one would have his new iPad. He actually kept it for almost five years, which is crazy for a first gen device, especially given that the first generation iPad was a little limited, shall we say. It's running an A4 chip, which was the same as the iPhone 4, but it has a 1024 by 768 display. It has no cameras of any sort. And at launch, there were not a ton of apps that could actually use this screen. So it, it was definitely a slow start, but in the first four years of iPads, Apple was going at a crazy pace. In 2011, the iPad 2 became the first to feature a camera. The iPad 3 had a retina display. Then the iPad 4 added lightning and the iPad mini came out. That's where I bought in. I saved up every penny I had and I spent it all on the iPad mini and I absolutely loved it. But the problem with the iPad became clear in about 2015. That's when the iPad Pro came out and we all kind of started to realize, okay, so it's like really big now, but does it do anything differently? What you doing on your computer? What's a computer? So by 2015, 16, 17, iPad sales were way down. And you can really clearly see this when you look at a chart of iPad revenue. There's a massive spike after the iPads introduced, but in that middle period, it dies down because the iPad really wasn't going anywhere until 2018. That's when this guy came along. The original iPad Pro is sensational and I'm holding it upside down. Don't worry about that. This thing absolutely saved the iPad. I think without this product, we would not be having this conversation now because I would have had it five years ago. I mean, just think of all that was introduced with this iPad, USB-C, Face ID, a completely new design, the A12X, 
which is the underpinnings of the M1 chip. I mean, this is the core design that we're still using to this day. So this is an absolutely monumental product and I still use it five years later. And I'll tell you one thing, nobody speaks this highly of the MacBooks that came out in 2018 because they were terrible. But this thing has absolutely stood the test of time. The problem is after pulling off this masterpiece, what has really happened? This is an M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which has an M1 chip that's faster and it has mini LED that isn't as good as it is in the MacBook Pros. Apart from that, oh, it's got an ultra wide camera that I've literally never used. What, what is new about this? I don't even have an M2 one because frankly, I couldn't be bothered. I spent like 1500 bucks on this thing and it was not worth it at all. Tell you what, the biggest problem that the iPad has right now in 2023 is this, the M2 MacBook Air. Because when you put these things side by side, an M2 MacBook Air and a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I cannot justify getting this iPad. Now to be fair, I'm not trying to say in this video that the iPad is useless. That's simply not true. And there are a ton of people that are absolute iPad diehards, but on a very fundamental basis of interacting with the device and its value for money, it just doesn't hold up. I mean, the MacBook Air is 1099 now. This iPad Pro is 1099 without a keyboard or a trackpad. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who would just use a bare iPad Pro with no accessories. You're going to get some sort of a keyboard, some sort of an input device, like an Apple Pencil. This thing is designed to be accessorized. And when you do that, especially if you use Apple's first party stuff, this is way more expensive than a MacBook Air with the same chip, but with a less functional operating system. I mean, look at multitasking. Multitasking is something that Apple has given a ton of thought into trying to make feasible on the iPad. They've got center stage, which we all know how that went. They've got a completely reworked Final Cut Pro interface that's designed to sort of make sense on the iPad. That has been met with mixed reviews for sure. And even the fundamental stuff that's been around for a couple of years, like split screen and slide over, it's just not a way that I enjoy interacting with a device. Let me give you an example. All right, so a very simple task here. All I want to do is have two applications open. I'm already in Safari. I can swipe up here and I can switch over to news. Now at this point I can use the trackpad or the slider bar like on an iPhone and I can go back and forth. That's fine. You know, that, that exists on the Mac. I have no issues with that. But if I want to have two things on one screen, this is where things bother me to no end. If I want to go ahead and drag news over to the side, I can do a split screen and I can re Oh, hello. I can kind of resize it. It, it only really wants to do half the screen or, 75% of the screen. Now, ignoring the fact that it, for some reason, blurs both applications when I'm using an M1 chip that could easily do that dynamically, if I don't want news to be on its whole side of the screen here, I can drag it out and have it on top, and then it can kind of hang out over, over here on, on one side or the other side, and you can kind of send it away like an iPhone app and then bring it back. You can have multiple apps over in this little tray here, but just interacting with this feels clunky and weird. I don't enjoy it at all. Whereas trying to do the same thing on the Mac is just so much easier. I click on Safari and it opens. I click on news and it opens. And from here, I can just do whatever I want. If I want news to be smaller, I can hide it over here. If I want Safari to be smaller, I can layer them on top of each other. I don't necessarily need to see both at the same time, but I can click back and forth between them extremely easily. I could also do the same stuff that I can on the iPad, just drag this on top and put them in a split screen view. Like it just doesn't need to be harder than we're making it. There's a saying, don't fix what ain't broke and never has it been more true than with Mac OS versus iPad OS. This is just how the Mac has worked for literally 40 years. The Apple Lisa introduced, you know, Windows and a graphical user interface. And it's been the same way ever since. 
There's no real reason to think that we need to overcomplicate it by having all of these gestures and swipes and a side tray and a split screen. It still confuses me, okay? We've had these features for like five years now and they still confuse me to this very day. And I'm someone who lives and breathes technology, so I can only imagine how it is for other people. And all that inconvenience, you're paying $1,400 for. And then you compound the limiting software with the fact that Apple isn't even updating this product with any amount of regularity or giving it any care when they do update it. It's hard to think why I would wanna give Apple my money for a new one of these. I mean, what's the rumor right now? An OLED display? Okay, cool. I'm not spending 1500 bucks so I can go from mini LED to OLED with the same crappy experience every single year. But that's not even the crazy part, all right? This video is going long, by the way. The crazy part is, I don't even know what Apple could do to fix this, okay? This is the thing that I realized when I was planning this video. In every single category, I could make a list of features that I would want or, or things that Apple could change to make a product better. The Apple Vision Pro hasn't even come out yet and I can already envision like a 10 year roadmap for how to improve it. But if Tim Cook himself knocked on my door came into my apartment and he said, Luke, how do I fix the iPad? What can I do to make this product worth your time and money? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it needs. It needs better software, but I don't know what they should change. You know, some people have said, put Mac OS on it, but even then I'm okay. It's just a Mac with a touch screen. Like whoop de doo not exactly gonna, replace my laptop. I think honestly the most incredible thing that Apple has done with the iPad in recent years is sidecar and universal control, but those aren't really, <laughs> that's not enough to justify buying a $1,400 iPad Pro, right? Just so you can use it as an external monitor. I can get a whole ass studio display for that if that's what I really wanted. Like you're not gonna buy an iPad for those features. So, what could Apple possibly do to rescue the iPad? I don't know. I started this video by saying, you know, we're gonna talk about how we got here and where we go next, but I don't have a where we go next. I was lying the whole time. I was hoping that by the time I got here, I would think of one, but I got nothing. So you let me know. What, what should Apple do to save the iPad? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe.